Morning, Jeff. Your left eye looks as though it's had two bottles of scotch on its own. Hmm. Oh. What's the matter now? Blade's gone. I've told you before, buy an electric razor. How can I afford an electric razor? Hang on. Maybe from the fellow who's coming up with a case. Mr. Randall? Yes. Come in. Thanks. I tried your office. Uh, I had a late night. Oh, I see. You're alone. Yes. Oh, uh, do go ahead. You've had breakfast? Yes, thanks. Uh, my name is uh, McAllister, James McAllister. I'm glad I've caught you alone, Mr. Randall, because I've a somewhat unusual profession. People tend to be alarmed by it. I'm a ghost hunter. I know whenever I enter an establishment. Whether well, uh, there's a ghost or not. I feel it. Quite a gift. It is. Put me near a ghost and I can tell you immediately. He's not very good, is he, Jeff? Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. McAllister? Yes. Well, I have a client, Mrs. Wentworth, at Craig Castle. You probably know her better as the much-married Kim Rieskamp, inheritor of the Rieskamp millions. And not that her private life is any of my concern. I'm engaged on a ghost hunt. But I am not convinced that there is a genuine ghost within miles of the place, even though I've seen it myself. Now you're confusing me. There are certain definite manifestations, but I don't believe they're supernatural. That is why I came to your company. And you couldn't have done better. I am earning 1,500 pounds. My proposition is simple. We share the fee and work on the project together. I've already written the cheque. What are you thinking about, Jeff? Pick it up, pick it up, it's 750 pounds. You've got a deal, Mr. McAllister. But I won't be able to get down to Craig Castle until tomorrow evening. That's perfectly in order, Mr. Randall. I will meet you in the Castle Drive tomorrow at 10? Fine. I shall stand duty tonight alone. Goodbye. Ciao.
Tell Mr. Maple I'll send in his report as soon as I can. Answer this inquiry. Tell him we're not interested. I don't know how long I'll be, Jeannie, but I'll give you a ring as soon as I get there. Oh, don't worry, Jeff. I'll take care of things this end. Morning, Jeff. Don't say anything. Jeannie will think you're talking to yourself. Isn't she lovely? And so efficient, too. Except she still can't spell. There's only one F in reference. So there's only one F in reference. A strange thing to say. How can you possibly see it from over there? And I have to. Uh, everybody spells reference wrong. Look, I must rush. I've got to get to Craig's village by the sea. But, Jeff. Late as it is. Bye. Be good. Mr. McAllister, Vicar? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, he's new to the village, isn't he? Yes. Employed by Mrs. Wentworth up at the castle to hunt the ghost. Ghosts? Nonsense. In any case, it's normally the function of the church to exorcise malevolent spirits. Are there really ghosts in the castle, Mr. McAllister? Folk stories, myths, superstitions. Oh, let him talk, Uncle Oliver. Pot of tea, Mr. McAllister. Thank you. There is a local legend, yes, miss. Um, won't you join us? If I may. The legend goes back many hundreds of years to the Wars of the Roses. Passed on by word of mouth? The owner of the castle, Sir Hubert de Craig, answered the feudal call and went with his retainers to fight in the north. In the great battle, Sir Hubert's side was defeated. But word somehow got back to the castle that Sir Hubert was dead. But he wasn't. He hadn't been killed in battle. No. He returned to the castle, only to find that his young wife had already taken a new husband. What did he do? He did nothing. But his young wife, preferring her new husband, threw him into a dungeon where he languished for 20 years and finally died. 20 years of bitterness and growing resentment. And he's supposed to return as a ghost? Nonsense, nonsense, the whole story. None of the more level-headed villagers believe it. Isn't that right, Mrs. Pleasance? Well, I don't, for one. Have you seen? If there had been a ghost at the castle, I would have felt the vibrations long before now. I'm not too happy about this job, Jeff. Not happy? Half McAllister's fees, more than we get for a top job. I know, but it's dodgy ground for me, associating with ghost hunters. Watch the road. You all right, Ken? Darling, where have you been? Seeing McAllister safely installed. I must say, this latest idea of yours is a bit wild, even for you. But I suppose for a girl who has everything, a ghost hunter becomes almost a necessity. Larry, I'm frightened. Of what? It's all in your imagination. Well, this isn't what I expect to hear from a loving husband. Let's not go through all that again. Anyway, I just popped in to say goodnight. You're not going? 
I do my best work at night, you know that. Larry, I didn't buy you a studio to keep you away from me at night. Darling, you promised me when we got married that you'd never come between me and my work. But this is something different. I'm nearly going out of my mind with all this ghost business. Well, you've got your ghost hunter. If you can't stand it here, then buy up an hotel. But don't bother me with all this. I'm an artist. I must work. Come in. Your myth, madame, in the sleeping draft. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Darling, Larry, I'm begging you. Don't leave me alone here tonight. Listen, darling, forget all about this ghost nonsense. Take your pills and get a good night's sleep. Where's McAllister? How should I know? Why don't you go and look for him? Are you going? What, on my own? You're not scared. Terrified. Listen. Can't see a thing. Marty! Shh! What? You were talking to yourself. Sorry. What happens now? The husband. Larry Wentworth leaves every night, to my mind, a more than somewhat strange circumstance. I think we should know if he goes to his studio or not. You want me to follow him, right? Yes. And then meet me back here. Tap gently on the front door. I'll hear you and let you know. Here he comes. like a studio. Hello. It seems Kim Rice comes out of luck again. What's this? Husband number seven. Well, that's that little mystery solved. <laughs> Asleep. Gallister. Mac. He's dead. Gentlemen, Mrs. Wentworth, nobody has much of an alibi, it seems to me. You and your staff asleep in the house. You alone at your studio. And your story, Mr. Randall, waiting outside in the drive is the weakest of all. Nevertheless, it's true, Sergeant. I was working for Mr. McAllister. Yes. Mm. Well, I won't keep you any longer. The detective branch will be down from London once they've seen these statements. In the meantime, I'd be grateful if every one of you remained in the area of the village. I should like to thank you, Sergeant. This has been a most distressing affair. If I may say so, you've handled it with a great deal of tact and consideration. Good day to you. 
Well, I think we ought to pay Mr. Randall off, darling. He can go down to the village and get a room at the inn. I've already been paid by McAllister. Well, let's call it a day, then. I'd rather stay on the case, Mrs. Wentworth. As I said, I've been paid in full. I do feel an obligation. I see. Anyway, I have to hang around till the police let me go back to London. Well, where would you like to start? Mainly you see the ghost upstairs, I understand. Yes, in my bedroom. Well, perhaps we ought to start there. Very well. I'm at your service. I should tell you, first of all, that I'm no ghost hunter. And I don't believe in ghosts. That is this ghost. So? So I was thinking in terms of a human being moving about the castle, appearing and disappearing at will. You really shouldn't be going through all this, darling. A couple of hours rest would do you far more good. Don't worry about me, Larry. Now, you ask the questions, Mr. Randall. Uh, mostly he appears by the door. Oh, no, not always. He sometimes appears over by the window. And sometimes over there. Any good? Oh, come on, darling. As Mr. Randall said, he's no ghost hunter. Randall and Hopkirk, investigators. Ah, uh, no, I'm sorry. He's away for a few days. Oh, I see. The bill. Twenty-three pounds. Oh, look, I'll get him to look into it as soon as he gets back. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm sure it's an oversight. Yes. Yes, I'll get him to call. Yes, I will. Uh, all right. Bye-bye. Yes? What number is that? Uh, which number are you calling? That is Jean, isn't it? Oh, it's you, Jeff. Uh, are you taking roots down there or something, or are you eventually going to come back and face your creditors? I see. So you're beginning to take the business seriously. Look, Jean, something rather terrible's happened. McAllister's been killed. Killed? You mean murdered? Well, there's not much doubt about that. I'm staying in the Duke of Cumberland until the inquest. The local police are rather keen on me staying. Jeff, you mean you're a suspect? No, nothing as dramatic as that. But they seem to think it's easier to keep tabs on me than on the ghost of Sir Hubert de Craig. Oh, I see. Well, bye-bye then. Morning. Morning. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. I'm waiting for someone. You don't mind? You can see me. Of course. But nobody can see or hear me. Only my partner, Jeff. Well, sorry, but I can. Always have. Ever since I was a little girl. Psychic, you see. From my mother's side of the family. This is fantastic. Are you sure I can't get you anything? Yes, yes, quite sure. Well, then, if you don't mind, I must get on. No, no, please do. I'll join you. Yeah. I just don't believe it. Oh, the kitchen. I used to employ two girls and a washing up woman, but one has to move with the times. I had a time and motion man in. He recommended all this. And now you do it all by yourself? All alone. What's that? How to be your own maintenance engineer. I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I'm learning. Mrs. Pleasance, shouldn't you call somebody in until you've mastered it? You are a worrier, young man. That's what my wife used to say. Morning, Jeff. What's the plan of attack? I don't know, yet. But it's quite obvious that something is going on. Hey. Well, I thought you, as a ghost, might be able to tell me what's happening, Sigmund. I'll ignore that. By the way, look, have you told the police about Wentworth yet? No. Well, shouldn't we? Maybe. But I'm not going to tell anybody anything till we know what's happening. We could talk to the girl he met at the cottage. And let her warn the current husband. We'll check her later. Jeff, do you know what you're doing? No. One thought. 
If Larry Wentworth wanted to get rid of his wife and keep the money, scaring her to death would be one way to go about it. What's that? Are you all right, Mrs. Pleasance? I'm all right, love. She can hear you all the time and see me. She's psychic, you know. I've mastered it. Well done, Mrs. P. You're doing a great job. Fifteen. Fifteen? Steps up to this place. You ought to watch it, Marty. This lack of exercise is bad for your health. What's our next move, Jeff? Get up to the castle and take a look at that bedroom. Without interruptions. Well, that's no problem. We just wait until Larry Wentworth's out of the way. His wife won't object. No, I don't suppose she will. What is it, Jeff? The Callister's check is burning a hole in the pocket. You're not going to send it back. Well, where to? The Callister doesn't need it where he is. Or does he? No, no, no. Everything's free. But you need it, Jeff and Jeannie. I oh, know we need it. But can we keep it? You were paid to find a ghost. OK, so you're working on it. Right, let's move. What's the hurry? If I'm going to justify my fee, there's going to be no lying down on this job. Well, it's nothing visible. We're looking for a hiding place, right? Right. Concealed space behind walls, right? Right. So what are you waiting for? Eh? If there's a concealed passageway behind a wall, you'll be in it. And if there isn't, I'll be standing in solid stone. Well, it won't hurt you, will it? It might. Well, now's your chance to find out. Off you go. Solid. But it didn't hurt. Try the bookcase. Jeff! Jeff! Can you hear me? Yeah. You found something? Yeah. A plain room, no way out. A priest hole. A what? A place where they used to hide during the persecution. And an ideal place for a ghost to hide until the heat's off. Now, how do we open it? There's no sign of a spring in there. Well, it's not the end of the world. When the ghost disappears, we wait. It's got to come out sometime. We've got this case wrapped up. Oh. Ah, Mr. Randall. Did you find anything? Like what? Well, I don't know. I'm asking you. I'll be here tonight in case the ghost walks. You don't believe he does, do you? Sir Hubert de Craig returned after 500 years to spread gloom and despondency. Well, can you think of a better explanation? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Good day, Mrs. Wentworth. Is there any news, darling? No. I spent the morning at the police station giving evidence about McAllister's death. And you? Well, I've been at the studio. Ah, does that mean you don't have to work tonight? Uh, no, I'm afraid I really must. Well, in that case, I think you'd better think again. Because if you go painting and leave me alone tonight, I'm going to cut off your allowance. You won't get another penny from me. And two of your delicious homemade scones, please, Mrs. Pleasance. <laughs> homemade? Didn't your friend tell you? Tell me what? I buy them from the supermarket in town on a weekly surplus arrangement. The kitchen's like an atomic plant. Oh, it's very economical. And then I run them through a fierce oven. You know, just enough to burn the tops. Oh, your actual King Alfred's? Well, people will insist on the homemade look. <laughs> two scones. 
That's right, love. Thank you, Mr. Randall. That's right. May I speak with you a moment, monsieur? Sure. I see you. For me, this is a difficult decision. A matter of conscience. Exactly. I have some information, found quite accidentally, which I feel Mrs. Wentworth should know. Go on. I cannot tell her because... Well, because it would be bad for Mr. Wentworth. Hello, Jeff. He's been to the cottage. So I finally decided to tell you. Mr. Wentworth does not always go to his studio to paint. He goes to a cottage just outside the village where he meets a young lady, right? But you know... And don't let it worry you. I'm grateful for any information, any time. But you said nothing to the police. Neither did you. I'm employed by them, monsieur. Then why tell me? Well, I think perhaps if Mr. Wentworth wants this woman and Mrs. Wentworth's money, any then... Then he goes to get rid of her. You know, you really should tell your fascinating theory to the police. <laughs> Jeff, he was trying to help. Was he? I don't know. Whose side are we on, anyway? Nobody's. Ghosts felt the cold. They don't. Come in, Mr. Randall. Yeah. See. Mrs. Wentworth in bed? Yes. I've taken up her milk and she took her sleeping pills. Mr. Wentworth? In his room. Is there anything I can get to you, Mr. Randall? No, thanks. Well. Let's make ourselves comfortable. Larry Wentworth. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Randall, for everything you've done. It isn't your fault that things came to such a tragic conclusion. I'd like you to accept this. It's a check for 250 pounds. As I told you before, Mrs. Wentworth, I've already been paid. Well, consider this just a little extra. A goodbye gift, if you like. Well, in that case, it's premature. There are still a few loose ends I'd like to tie up. Loose ends? But uh, surely everything's obvious. Maybe. Uh, John claude told me this morning about my husband's extracurricular interests. The girl at the cottage? Apparently, you've known about her from the beginning. In my job, I stumble across quite a lot of irrelevant information. I learn to be discreet. But this wasn't irrelevant information, Mr. Randall. Apparently, he wanted the girl and everything my money could provide. The answer? To get rid of me. Using the ghost routine as a cover? Yes. And as he fondly hoped, to inherit all my money. Would he have done? Well, enough to keep him in the manner to which he'd become accustomed. You, you may think me very gullible, Mr. Randall, but I always 
genuinely thought of him as a creative artist. You believed his excuses. <laughs> and it was very foolish of me, but I never seriously considered another woman. I thought that I had given him everything a man could want. Goodbye, Mr. Randall. Are you quite sure about the check? Quite sure, thank you. Jeff, do you know what you're doing? You've just turned down 250 pounds. Right. Why won't you accept Mrs. Wentworth's version? Because it suggests Larry Wentworth killed McAllister. McAllister must have seen something. When McAllister was killed, Wentworth was at the cottage. We followed him there, remember? We could have murdered him before he left. When he left, McAllister was still with us. So whoever killed him, it wasn't Larry Wentworth. What do we do now? We open up a new line of inquiry. some questions. My name's Randall. I expect you know mine already. As a matter of fact, I don't. Laura Slade. You are from the police, aren't you? Should I be? I assumed you were. I'm a private investigator. Oh. Well, ask your questions. So long as you don't mind me packing. Fine. It's difficult an hour to start. Um, did Wentworth ever mention a ghost at Craig Castle? Sir Hubert Craig. Yes. Did you believe it existed? No. It was just a figment of her imagination. Excuse me. It never occurred to you that Wentworth might be playing the ghost himself? Larry? You're joking. Well, why would he want to do that? Well, he was married to money, and he enjoyed it. Oh, yes. He enjoyed it, all right. And maybe things were OK, until you came along. Then? He wanted to marry you, and keep the money. So he invented the ghost? Yes, to drive Mrs. Wentworth insane in the hope he'd get her committed. Or to cover his plan to do away with her. Is that it, Mr. Randall? Maybe. I'm asking you. Well, for one thing, Larry and I were together long before she met him. We... we... known... When your late husband was supposed to have killed McAllister, he was under my observation. Um, I, I, I don't quite know what you mean, Mr. Mr. Randall. Well, if Larry Wentworth didn't kill McAllister, someone else in the house must have. But, but you can't possibly suspect John Claude. I never said I did. But I'm led to believe there really was a ghost. <laughs> well, you can hardly tell the coroner that tomorrow. I agree. It's unlikely to be accepted as evidence. So, uh, what do you propose to do? Hunt the ghost? Well, at least satisfy myself that one exists. It's the only way to clear John Claude of suspicion. Well, tonight will be your last opportunity. I leave for Rio tomorrow, directly after the inquest. Then you won't mind me sitting in for the last night. Oh, no, Mr. Randall. On the contrary, it will give me a feeling of added security. Let's go. It's still not going to work. Can you think of anything better? Well, then, the police have got no further with McAllister's murder. Larry's dead. 
Tim Wentworth doesn't have to do a thing. She can't help herself. She's got to do something. Like sending you to join McAllister. We'll soon find out, won't we? Jeff, check the curtains. I think I just saw them move. find a release catch. Why do we leave him there? Why not? Every family has a skeleton in the cupboard. So that's how it's done. It's no good, Jeff. If I've tried it once, I've tried it a thousand times, my hand just goes straight through it. Oh, there's no switch in here, either. You just have to stay in here until somebody hears you yelling. That could be, never. It certainly won't be before the inquest. Or before Kim and Jean-Claude take off. They really fooled everyone, didn't they? Except you, Jeff. And you were too late. Oh, thanks very much. But why kill Larry Wentworth? Why kill him? She could have bought him off. Laura Slade. Kim found out, you mean? Well, we know she found out. Money isn't everything. Kim's a woman. And hell hath no fury. Like a woman scorned. Right. Got to think of something to do. Marty, go down to the police station. What for? They can't see me. They can't hear me. Well, you'll think of something. Go on. All right, Jeff. I'll do the best I can. Don't go away, will you? Mrs. Wentworth. I don't have to say how sorry I am. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. The inquest is being held upstairs. It's just a formality. Nothing for you to worry about. She's taking you in, Sergeant, and she'll do the same with the coroner. Sergeant, only a mile and a half to go. It's no good, Jeff. It never stood a chance of working. She had a dog.
Would you uh, care for some more coffee? just come up with a very interesting theory. Oh? Tell him. Mrs. Newton and Fowler said they heard an intruder and shot him as he forced open the door. Plausible. Yes. If they weren't expecting the husband. The husband? He came back to the cottage 40 minutes ago. Is our security angle covered? Yes, that's all taken care of. But don't you see what it means? They planned a cold-blooded murder. They had it all worked out. But unfortunately for them, an alien came through that door instead of her husband. It all fits. Morally, they're guilty. Oh. Well, the amnesia drug was administered a few minutes ago. They won't be able to remember a thing. Well, we can't just let them go free. I suppose you think I should hand them over to the public prosecutor. He'd sure have a great case. Now, what would he go for? The attempted murder of the husband or the killing of an alien. We can't produce that body. There's no concrete evidence against them. And the two accused would both have genuine, total amnesia. So there's nothing we can do about it. We're not in the moralizing business, Colonel. Well, what about the husband? They wanted to kill him once. They're bound to try again. Hmm. Well, in the line of duty, we stumbled onto a triangle. Shadow's involvement made it a... Square. All we're doing is erasing the past 12 hours. So it's back to the triangle. Colonel Foster, you get back to that UFO. Get all the information you can. Right. Alec, you better get the medical team to work on that alien. On my way. How are Mrs. Newton and Mr. Fowler? They're sleeping, sir. Well, get them out of here. But, sir, I really don't think... Just get them out of here.
The accused will stand. I want to make my position clear. The verdict in this case has been taken by the four jury officers. But I would like to establish, as a matter of record, that I find myself in agreement with them. After due deliberation, they have found Colonel Forster guilty of the charge as stated. Under Article 183, the sentence is specific. The execution was fixed for 1,200 hours the 19th of next month. Any appeal must be lodged within 14 days. <laughs>